All right, today we have a G87 in the shop. This is our first one. Uh, we're gonna be doing a KW Haas kit. Not only did we get one, we got two. So we're gonna do back-to-back -back suspensions. Both cars showed up same time. It's already late in the day, so Gage and I both tag team this one, knock it out real quick, and uh, get it over to alignment. So height-wise, we're gonna put it about half the distance is all he wants of what's currently there. Stay tuned. He was supposed to say two M2s, not two G87s. That it's not roll off the tongue as well. <laughs> <laughs> two M2s. Hey, man, the M2 was the F87 before it came out in this body style. So I can't just say two M2s. Two M2s. Two M2s. Two M2s. I'll be inside. Two M2s. Fine, I quit. Two. Going home. Wait, so are we going to say what's wrong with that one? Mm. That was Femto unlocked and tuned and had all the goodies. Accordingly had a gearbox put in it and now it's flashed by the dealer and now it's back to being locked and it doesn't run. Starts and dies. So it was towed here straight from the dealership. That's sick. So, yeah. <laughs> so we get to fix that, but we're also lowering it because we have these in stock. Perfect. It's, it's crazy that we haven't had one of these yet and then two show up basically same day. G81, which we don't have, very unfortunately. It's my dream car currently. These are crazy. I love them. Okay, so are these factory wheels or they're, I'm confused? They're not factory that came on it. This car had those. And he picked these up as a spare set because he bought a custom set of Inga's Forge wheels through us. While mm -hmm. those are being built and we're waiting, he picked these up so he could drive the car and enjoy it. That is the 963M wheel from BMW. Leave a comment. Whatever that means, sounds cool. Yeah, leave a comment if you think those should go on Fruit Loop. You have to comment though, you gotta leave a comment. We're gonna do this whole thing in an hour? It's 12. And the wheel's off in an hour. I don't wanna work that slow. Mm. Can, can we do it by... We, we need to stop and eat at some point. Two o'clock. Oh, oh God. I haven't ate lunch in the last few days. I know. We've been like friends. Oh, damn. That was so, so close. So, this is their Haas kit, which is height adjustable spring. Like a coilover, but it will still use the stock shock so you retain your factory dampening and all of that. None of that has to be coated out or anything like that, like you would with the traditional coilovers. This little guy sets on the strut. Get to work, Gage. So if you're buying an M4, M3, or M2, the good thing is, is all these suspension parts are exactly the same, which amazes me. What? Inserts the one hour later. <laughs> All right, so we have the rear part and ready to start gathering our parts out of here. Uh, if you're like most guys, we don't read instructions. It does send them, and I've done enough of these to where I don't need them. But if it's your first time doing a Haas kit, pay attention. Because at first glance, you'll notice the bump stops are just paired with both sets of front springs in here. So there's no indication on which one goes to what. By the eye, if you just look at this, it looks the same size as any other normal front pump stop. So I have made the mistake one time that I put these in the front because I did the front kit first and then discovered that it was wrong. And these are the front ones and I had to tear it all back apart. So rear, front, very important or you have to take it back apart. And because of the bump stop, that's the only reason that you have to take the shock out of the back. Otherwise it would just be pull the spring, throw a new spring up and you'd be done. But you have to change the bump stop so you gotta take the dust shield off and the top hat. Alright, so new bump stops are transferred over. These are taller, a little bit shorter ones there. So shocks are done, they can go back in. We'll put the new pads on the springs and the adjustment portion and that's it. Don't forget to plug these back in. That's essential. I don't know what I don't know what my friend over here is doing. Making sure she's all the way in there. Did you take my cable? Oh. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. I was like... <laughs> You're putting your cable in your hole. No, mine's over here. Yep, they're in the dining Like I've been. It's just a ratchet. He's not hurting anything. In case you're looking at that going, man, he's just sending it home. No, it's just an electric ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have much, no. much force. These BMW mechanics are getting out of hand. I think it's violent. 
bro slipped on his tool and said, oh, you'll know if I hit you, you'll feel it. You think? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Man, I pinch ratchet to the head. <laughs> You're fine. Moving on to the front. All you're gonna do underneath, 16 for the end link, 16 for the bolt, hold the strut in, and under the sensor that goes right here. And that's all you have to do underneath. Still in my 18. I do. Do we have to take all this out? Nope. Just enough to get that little plug in out. I just fished it underneath the brace. Okay. For some reason, I thought we had to take it all off. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing more than needed. No, because I'm gonna leave the top hat in place and just drop it out the center. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. This one being all wheel drive, I mean, not all-wheel drive should help us there. I got You're you. are not fighting an axle. Oh, uh, so I'll put this back together. <laughs> They're all different. So, I've done all this and like not needed to before, I think. You already took most of this off? Where are you walking around? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pull her out. Ta -da. So I'm marking center location of these because the KW one is side specific and you have to line these up back where they went so everything goes into place. And then once this is off, we'll pull a measurement. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's 50 millimeters from the bottom of this strut lower, which will probably put it about here. So we'll do that after we get it pulled off. On that note, Gage is being extra weird. <laughs> After you get the old bottom hat off, you'll pull the measurement from here down 50 millimeters, which is this line already I've marked. And then I have my centering points for these two areas. We'll take it over to the press and press that new piece on. It takes four of us to do this. Nuclear football. Oh no. Okay, we have it. So if you're wondering how this goes back in, there's a little notch right here. Uh, that lines up with your hole. It's kind of hard to mess it up. Look at that. She looks like she's all the way. Pull our chisel out. Into that. New one's back in. It's kind of going the wrong way. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Stay alive. Okay, we're going back in. Um, so our distance we measured is from it's 15 millimeters from right here, top of the purple to the edge of the black, bottom of the black right here. So we have 15 in the front millimeters. We have 10 millimeters in the back. So that's that's our fitment. Don't forget to put this white piece back on because it comes off when you take the shirt apart. And after that, you basically just put the, uh, it back together how it came apart. Don't forget to replace your sensor that's on your strut, your bottom hat right here. It's a T30. Got to swap that over still. Knuckle and in link are tight. Yep. And you put the, you set the set screw on this. Yes. Okay. Officially ready for top trim and wheels. Okay, so we have officially finished the uh, true suspension part of the job, and now we're putting the top trim back on. And then after that, we will be putting the wheels and tires back on the car and uh, sit on the ground. See how she looks. It's going to look tall because the springs have to settle. Yeah, so don't, I'm good. Yeah, so I'm carried away with how she looks immediately. Drive it around, let it settle down, then make adjustments if you need to. It's gonna be bringing your kids to work day, every day. I was waiting for it to go down here. Okay, Mac down, down. She said, what are, you, what are you doing? With your strange looking thing. Very strange mammal. <laughs> Smart thing. Okay. Stock height, basically. I'll measure the difference between these two cars real quick, and then uh, we'll see what the difference is before it uh, settles. Ah, oh, it does, it looks great. It's hard to tell. Okay, so fender to the edge of wheel is four and a half inches before it's settled. Okay, this is a stock car, stock suspension, five inches. So we've dropped a half inch before we've even settled. So with settling, we'll probably drop roughly about an inch. 
And you remember we have 10 millimeters of room left before a max and 15 millimeters before a max from the front. So there's another half inch, roughly about three quarters of an inch before completely maxed out on our Haas kit. So we'll see, we'll drive it around in a minute and see how, how she looks. Sounds sick. Doesn't sound that bad. For no, it sounds good for for stock. Okay, it's closed. Okay, open. That's crazy. There's no fucking way of stock. Okay, Have you checked under it? Yep. There's no mid pipe. Nothing. Stock. Oh uh, no, wow. It's already settled a ton since we even pulled up for right, alignment. We? So we just got here uh, to alignment. It looks so much better. This car has a 10 millimeter spacer in the back, I think, and a 15 in the front, something like that. So they, they got the wheel spaced out a little bit. It's lowered now. I mean, everything looks, looks really, really good compared to how it did stock. I mean, and these cars sound so good. With stock exhaust with the valves open, this thing sounds amazing. So like buying an M car right now, the M2 is the car to get in my opinion as from driving all of them and working on all of them i mean this car is is, is amazing thanks for watching guys please like and subscribe and we'll see y'all later